Hey everybody, welcome back to Appify Your Business. I posted a video a couple days ago that outlined how to create a audit log in an application. And I had some questions come up in the comments about the complex formula that was in here. I kind of glossed over it and, and really didn't go into it in detail. So I thought I'd make another video that describes what's going on in this formula. And it's also a good lesson in, in how to think about formulas in general with AppSheet. So just to review what the video briefly covered last time, this is an audit app and the complexity in this audit app really wasn't the creating the audit process. The only complexity that, that could have caused confusion was the formulas that were being used to essentially, if we look at the preview here, generate this string of data that is displayed um, to the to the end user, you know, to describe the changes that are going on. So that's what we're going to cover today is how this formula actually works. And hopefully this helps you understand ways to organize your formulas or even troubleshoot other formulas as well that you're new to. So to do this, I am going to use a slide to help identify through colors and hopefully make it easier to understand. So I'm going to switch over to the slide. And what you see here is that same formula with different sections of the formula highlighted. So at a high level, this formula has two parts. The first part in orange here is just a simple formula that takes an email address and then removes the domain from the end of it, right? To make it more like an alias. If you're building you know, an app for your organization or something like that, everyone's gonna have the same email address, uh, domain anyway, and it's a lot more simple, uh, less redundant to remove that. So I typically use this method uh, just to remove that redundancy that would appear uh, really in any record. But that's the first part. The second part here is, is in yellow that extends all the way down to the page, right? That is an if then statement to create uh, the, the comment itself. And the and, the ampersand, the ampersand here is a way to concatenate. So if you recall, I, there's another video on uh, important app sheet formulas. The ampersand is a way to simply concatenate two chunks of formula or strings together without having to wrap the whole thing in a concatenate function. So you can easily use concatenate instead of these ampersands as well. I just prefer ampersands because they're quicker uh, in general. Um, so anyway, back to the, the second chunk here of data. We have basically just a simple if then statement where we are counting the column that is related log. So if we were to jump back into the app and we go to the table here, for our main table. Related logs is that virtual column, that inline table that was created and ultimately generates in the application here, the entries for the audit log that you can see down below here on the right side of the screen. So if the count of those entries are zero, that would indicate it's a new record that's being created because there has there's no change history associated with that. And that's all we're simply doing for this first part. If that's true, then we're gonna use the text new because there's really nothing to share. It's a new record being created. And then the second part of this is the else statement. This, all this other stuff is what happens if it's not zero. And that's where things you know get a little complex. So you can see here in the second part of the function, what we're doing is concatenating, because we have the ampersands here, three different blocks of data or formulas really that are, you know, that are highlighted in these different colors, right? So they're all the same. The only difference between the three formulas are there are the different columns that we're using to display in the audit log if changes happen to that. So that's the key. We don't want to just show those values if columns haven't changed yet. So if, that's why we have if statements in each of these, right? So we're, we're taking another look for each of these sub conditions 
and we'll get into that those details in a second here. For this else statement, we have three different chunks that were concatenated in together, and that formulates the rest of the overall statement. So if we just wanna look at this at a high macro level for a formula, it's really just two parts, just to review. One is a simple formula to extract the alias from an email. And the second part is to determine whether a record is a new record being created or an old record being created. Now let's jump into the else condition and eat you know, one of these chunks here to detail what's going on more specifically. So now we're focused in on one of those colored chunks from the previous slide. And once again, I've helped identify different sections of this chunk of data with different colors to help the help me explain it better. So once again, it's an we're using the if function here and the if function has the condition that you're looking for. So with this lookup, our goal here is to create a condition that checks the latest entry in the table to see if it matches the new entry that has just been made. So at a high level, we're doing a lookup of that value, and then we're checking it against that same column uh, in the, the record itself, the parent record itself. And if they match, then we're going to do the orange response, which is just double quotes, meaning that there was no change to that column specifically. So therefore, we do not need to log anything in the audit log because there was no change. And then if that's not true, we will run the green section of the if function, which is if the if it doesn't remain the same, then we can then start to concatenate some of the text and additional lookups uh, together to form that presentation in the application itself, which is if I click into one of these, which is simply this piece of data here where we're saying the date column is changing from this value to another value. So that's what this green chunk is, is doing here. So now that we've identified the overall structure of this, you know, these sub chunks of formula, let's look into the actual lookup section itself, right? And what's going on here. So with AppSheet formulas, all the functions you're using, they, they are wrapping, um, as, as you can see, they essentially wrap other either columns or values or formulas themselves to then compute that, that formula whatever formula you're using, right? So whenever you're trying to assess a complex looking um, formula, you need to start from inside the formula to build an understanding on what's going on. So with this formula, we're gonna go a couple levels in until we stop seeing the um, formulas, uh, additional formulas here. So we can see that order buys the initial formula that's being computed in this whole series of formulas here. What order by does is allows us to do what it sounds like, order a series of IDs from a table by the column itself that you want to sort on. So if you wanted to sort by name, you would put the name column in the target table to sort those IDs in the order of name in alphabetical order. In our situation, we want to order all the IDs in that child, that log table by the latest value. So we know what value is the current value in the table. So what we're doing here is we're using the last updated column that we're going to target. So we're targeting the related logs column, right? Which is a list of IDs in the previous table. So going back to the app, right? Related logs. This column here, all that is, is a list of IDs that AppSheet then uses to generate this inline table itself. So that's all that's here. So if we were to click on related logs, just to show you and click on the app formula and hit test, 
what do we get when it's calculated? We get a list of those IDs from the target table. So that's really all that is going on when you see an inline table. So what we're doing here is we're gonna order those IDs by the last updated column. And then the third entry is optional and whether you want to sort descending or not. So in this case, we wanna sort descending because we want the latest value on top. And why do we want the latest value on top? It's because we wanna be able to just pluck the first entry from that list of values that are being ordered and be confident, 100% confident that that is the latest value from that list. And that's where the next part of the formula comes in. If we back out a bit, that's the index. We're where we are simply using the index function on the list of IDs, and we're pulling the first value in that list. Okay, so that gives us the latest ID column. And then lastly, we're doing a lookup. We are looking up that ID that we plucked out, that first entry, and then we're looking it up from the log table and then we're using the log ID table to then pull the date field. So while that looks complex, hopefully that's fairly easy to understand at a, at a higher level what we're essentially doing with this chunk in that we're just looking up the last entry in the log table and we're comparing it to the new entry that's being entered by the user. And then just to review, if that is true, then that indicates if they're equal to each other, that means the value before is the same as the value after and that there has been no change. So there's no need to display anything in the audit log because there's been no change. But if that's not true, that means things have changed. And that's where we will add this green section of text and do a, you know, where it's a bunch of static text that we're concatenating together However, we have that same lookup function where we're gonna go look that date up and also put that in, that date in the presentation for this else condition. So going back to this overview, just to wrap up here. So hopefully this helps understand what's going on in this formula and more importantly, help you to organize your formulas to make it easier to understand. And perhaps my methods aren't going to be the best or even work for you. The, the important thing is that you find the style of typing your formulas that are easy to understand so you can look at things in, in chunks of data so you don't get lost in the minutia at, at a time, right? So I group things like this because it's easier for me to tell the difference in app sheet when I'm dealing with other sections of a formula. And this also allows me to then remove chunks easily if I'm getting you know, a formula error or something like that, because I have a parenthesis somewhere that it shouldn't be, or a double quote that's causing a, an error with my formula. Um, this allows me to isolate problems a lot easier as well, because I can always just remove these, you know, certain chunks of data to quickly try to narrow down where the problem may be. So with that, hopefully that, that helps. And if you thought this video was useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks everybody and have a good one.